Today on Chat Room, I'm with Peter Dykes, Associate Principal, Oboe, with the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. We're going to talk about the life, or well, Peter's life, as a professional musician, find out about the Oboe, and also some of the free concerts the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra is performing uh, for families and for school kids today. Here we are in the library. Welcome to Chat Room, Peter. Thank you ever so much for having me. Why did a nice boy from North Yorkshire take up the oboe would be my first question. <laughs> I often get asked that, and why do I not play a brass band instrument? Um, it was literally uh, in, my, in my primary school, there was a spare oboe at the back of the cupboard. My local uh, education authority had this fantastic um, music, music service uh, where there was sort of instruments available and you could have... Um, you could have tuition on them, and um, so there was a there was an oboe at the back of the cupboard. Would you like to play the oboe? I had no idea what one was, and um, but I just I just kind of took to it when I started it. Had you been learning any other instrument? Before? Recorder, recorder. Yeah. Oh boy, and that's, so, that's par for the course, I suppose. Yes, it's it's a very very natural kind of progression for wind players. Tell us a bit about the instrument, Peter. Um, the oboe, it's been around for as long as orchestras have, hasn't it? As, yes. As, a, as an orchest orchestral instrument. Yes, it's one, of, it's, one of the, it's one of the first instruments in what you would consider to be the orchestra. Um, if you go back to sort of, well, 1750s and earlier, um, Telemann, uh, Vivaldi, um, those sort of Baroque composers, that they, the staple orchestral ensemble would of course have strings, mm. but then it would have a pair of oboes as well. Um, and it's, it, back in the day, it was, a very, it was a very simple instrument. It was basically what you would imagine a recorder to look like. Mm -hmm. It maybe just had two keys, um, and um, but but the uh, the mouthpiece with the two reeds that vibrates against each other. That was the, the main difference from the recorder, um, and um, it, it's. It's, it's because of the way that it makes that noise, it can make a really large projecting noise. So it belongs with the woodwinds. That's, yes. That's the yeah. section of the, the cor yep. anglais or the bassoon or yeah. some instruments like that. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, has, it, has it been modified or modernised yes, uh, over, sure, over, over the years? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's from, from a two-keyed instrument. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> From a two-keyed instrument back um, in the sort of 1750s, what, what we would now call a Baroque oboe, mm. which just had um, um, a couple of keys down here. Yes. Um, gradually over time, more keys have been added, and then there was the kind of um, the high point of instrument development uh, was in Paris in the uh, sort of middle to late 1800s, where this system of key work was slowly developed. Um, and so here we have 21, 22 keys yes. and a very sort of um, a very complicated looking set of screws and springs and levers. Um, and the, uh, the system that was developed then has kind of been refined over time, but essentially hasn't changed too much since then. So, so it's, it's a very, it's very sort of, um, it, it's, it came on a long way um, in, in very sh short bursts, I suppose. It looks... Yeah. As you say, complicated. Mm. Is it difficult to play? Um, it's it's incredibly difficult to play. No, that's, <laughs> that's my excuse. No, um, um, it can be it can be a fickle mistress sometimes. Um, in what way? In what way? Well, the, your your margins of error are very very small yes. on the instrument. Very much like uh, like a French horn. The margin for error on a French horn is very very small. So so it's um, it, 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 you really have to take a mentality to the instrument that you own the instrument otherwise it will own you so that somebody yeah. that plays the clarinet mm. well won't necessarily play the oboe well no uh, that, uh, absolutely uh, even though they're both reed instruments that's right yeah because the way that you the way that you specifically blow the instrument the way that you form your embouchure your your lip position yes. um, is very very specific to each one okay yeah tell us about um when you started out, who, do, who did you study with um, under, under for the oboe? Oh, I had a, f a fantastic local um, itinerant music teacher there who taught all the woodwind instruments uh, called Ray Ross. And then eventually, um, three or four years later, when, it, when, it, when you're kind of getting a feeling for the fact that this is something you could really specialise in, then you need to look for a, um, a, a specialist oboe teacher. And of course, I, I grew up in, um, in Richmond in North Yorkshire, which is a very sort of it's a rural town. So it's a case of, okay, the nearest 
specialist teacher is maybe sort of an hour and a half drive away, but that's just what one does. Yes. Um, so I, I trotted down to uh, down towards Leeds, and um, yeah, to a teacher there, Michael Michael Hughes. So yeah, and and then. Um, when you get to tertiary level, I study at the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. Um, then it's um, th then you're on to the, the, the kind of next level of, of, of tuition. And and after that, international orchestras or orchestras. Yeah, yeah. That want you know want you to play the oboe. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, I mean, is that how it happens? That's basically how it happens. Mm. I mean, it's a very it's a, it's a it's a very um, it's a very t let's say for argument's sake it's a very tight market globally let's you know it's it's but it's also um, I, I could essentially go and play in an orchestra in Germany an orchestra in Japan an orchestra in Argentina it's the same skill set the notes on the page are the, are the same yes. um, and even if you don't really understand the actual spoken language of where you are you can you can pick it up to get by. For, for a rehearsal situation very quickly. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg situation where you, you finish your studies and then you're looking around for orchestral openings if you want to do full-time orchestral playing. And whilst you're looking around and maybe going to do auditions, you still need to be, you need to be gaining experience as you go. Right. So it's, um, so I was doing, um, so I finished my study in, in, um, in Glasgow and then I was doing little bits of work with the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. Slovenia. And then Slovenia was my first job. Yeah. That's yeah, so at the, that's at the time you were auditioning all around the place and one of those, yeah, that was the first job. What that was that like? A yeah, different country, different um, sort of culture? Yeah. But as you say, the notes are the same. The, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and the irony is um, it was an opera and ballet orchestra. So it was the Slovenian National Theatre Opera and Ballet Orchestra. and. I'd only been to watch one op opera in my life, and I'd never been to the ballet. <laughs> I knew all about symphonies. So I, I turned up, and, and my, my first day, they gave me a pile of parts. Then this is, this is your music. This is, this is tonight is, is Swan Lake Ballet. Tomorrow is Nabucco, an opera. Next night, Cosi Fantasi. Next night, wow. Madame Butterfly. And I didn't have any rehearsals in this wow. at all. So you just have to go and play it on the show for the first time and you've just met these colleagues and yeah so it's, it's a, an amazing experience from that point of view Slovenia is a really is a really interesting country um, at, at that time as well if you if you're interested in the sort of political side yes, of things it's yeah. a really fascinating place to be for, for, for a wee while so yeah yeah Peter Dykes with us today on chat room talking about the oboe and his life as a professional musician with the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra Welcome back to Chat Room. I'm with Peter Dykes, oboe player. What was it like in Europe in those early years, Peter? Great experience, UNS, a musicale. Yep. That must have been a wonderful experience for a young man. Yes, incredible. Welcome back to Chat Room. I'm with Peter Dykes, oboe player. What was it like in Europe in those early years, Peter? Great experience, UNS, a musicale. Yep. That must have been a wonderful experience for a young man. Yes, incredible. Um... There is there's a number of um, international um, youth orchestras ar around the world. Um, you've got the European Union Youth Orchestra. You have the Gustav Mahler Youth Orchestra and the the Jeunesse Musicale World Orchestra, which I was a member of for for a couple of years. And it's um, you you send a you send a, a recorded audition to uh, to Berlin, yeah. and then um, they have a listen to listen to auditions from all around the world. And so there was 42 nationalities in the orchestra and um, it was a real a real eye-opener because it was it, I, I got offered the position and, and uh, to, to, to play in that orchestra and then they said well okay this summer is a seven-week residency we're going to be in North America and so they sort of pick a different continent each time yes um, so yeah seven weeks in, in, in Canada and the States and then the next one was was all through all through Europe um, unfortunately the year after um, I left, it was South America, which would have been awesome, but you know. Um, so yes, and you've got the, all of these this melting pot of people thrown together um, and coached by uh, the, the players from the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, which is probably considered to be one of the finest yes. orchestras in the world. So um, to have that kind of level of access to that expertise, um, also we worked with some incredible uh, sort of global name conductors like Kurt Mazur, 
um, and played in some of the in some of the big concert halls in the world. So that so as a as a sort of eye opening experience, it's un unbelievable. Wonderful experience. And yep. then solo in other orchestras, Zagreb, for example. Yeah, I've done the yeah do, done the odd, odd the odd thing around where they they may invite you to either come in and play in the oboe section yes. for a for a period of time, or um, they may invite you to come and play uh, concertos as well. So that's uh, yeah the, the the odd sort of thing around there. Yeah. How come you finished up in New Zealand? What you came here? What thirteen years ago now, or somewhere? Yes, like yeah, in two thousand and four. Um, well, as as I was as I was saying earlier, the it, it is it is literally a global industry, and I was very fortunate. My oboe teacher was actually French Canadian. His wife was from Sydney, and they lived in Glasgow. So as soon as I started. My, my my lessons with with my main teacher he he really opened my eyes out to the idea that you know this is a global thing um and then um also the the new zealand orchestras at the time always advertised in um in the british press for position i think it had been a traditional sort yeah. of recruitment area yes, yes. as was the uh, as was the us for for a few years as well so um and now 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 every job is advertised online so it's you, you know what's going on so um so yeah the uh, a position in the Christchurch symphony orchestra was was advertised I, I was just really interested in it so um and you've got nothing to lose by by popping your head above the parapet and, and you know seeing if, if they might be interested so you were solo then, solo with the Christchurch. Yeah, the principal school. over there. Yeah, principal over yeah. there, and lecturing and teaching at the same time. Was yes, a, co a combination of, of that plus um, uh, teaching at the University of Canterbury, um, and of course Christchurch has this incredible um, high school age level music f system. Of the, there's the Christchurch School of Music, yeah. and at the time there was the Petman Junior Academy of Music. Burnside High School was this incredible machine for turning out um, fantastic musicians. So I was involved in, in all of those, yeah. And then six years ago, yeah. I moved to Wellington. Yes. For the New Zealand Symphony Yeah, Orchestra. yeah. So you must have liked New Zealand well oh, it's fantastic. To stay on. It's to great. Stay oh no, it's a great. Yeah, it's, it's I'm I'm properly through the door. I've got my citizenship and, yeah. and everything. It's a fantastic. Yeah, it's a great yeah. great country to do to do this in. Yeah. You're in the contemporary group Stroma. Yes. As well. Yeah. This is a little offshoot for your musical yeah. talents. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Stroma is one of one of my favourite things that I that I do. Um, the seeds for a love of contemporary music were, were sort of planted in my mind back when I was a student, and I'm very grateful to, for, to my oboe teacher for that. He sort of said, "Are you interested in doing new music?" And I've kept that going. Stroma is a is a a contemporary group in Wellington, which is put together by Michael Norris, who's a composer, and Hamish McKeach, who's a conductor. And um, the idea of playing new music, the best new music from New Zealand and the best new music from around the world, um, and presenting it um, to audiences here. So um, it's kind of, it, it appeals to me in a, in a sort of a, um, in a, an academic way, because you, you presented with these pieces that maybe not heard before. Exactly. So you sort of <laughs> there's, there's a sense of discovery. Mm -hmm. Then there's a sense of is this is this a good piece? Yes. It could be garbage, <laughs> but but it, it could it's, be great. But it's experimentation. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's and where, and that, where can you go with this? Yes. Type of music? Yeah. And um, I just happen to have a real enthusiasm for that. So yeah, it's it's great. And it's mostly um, players, uh, my colleagues from the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra who play in it. Right. So so it's there's we already know each other's playing so we can really focus on what what the music is good stuff yeah, yeah. back to the oboe it's a very important instrument i didn't realize until i heard you talking about it once somewhere and that it it sets the pitch for the orchestra that's that's which right. is kind of an aspect that a lot of people might not realize you know, they think everyone tunes up to the violins or the yes, piano yeah. or, or something but yeah. the, but the oboe is the, is the is the pitch setter yeah that's right yeah. What, can you explain a bit about that i think it goes back to there's a number of reasons for it um, my favourite one is it goes back to the days in if if we want if we do wind the clock back to 1750 or whatever, yeah. the pitch let's for argument's sake the pitch of a note of the note A from one town let's say in Leipzig or whatever from one town will be X number of kilohertz it could be 445 kilohertz right. the next town the pitch may be a different pitch it could be 440 kilohertz from town to town it was different 
So you could be playing flat and something. Yeah, exactly. Like or, exactly. Or sharp. Yeah, and that is now, uh, and that still holds on a much wider geographical scale. Yeah. So in New Zealand, we play 440 kilohertz. Um, in Slovenia, it's 443. It's different around the world. So, and, and the oboe was generally considered to be the kind of pitch bastion, or the most could be the most stable uh, of of the instruments, or depending on who you talk to, the most unstable, so you have to match the oboe. But it's got that lovely strident sound. Yeah. That, and that would set the other instruments. That's right, yeah, yeah. So, so in in um, in modern terms now, the oboe gives the A because, the tuning A, because that's that's the most, um, it, as you say, it's the, it's the most, it's the clearest sound. Just briefly, I thought in this day and age, there'd be some sort of digital instrument that tuned, that the orchestra yeah, tunes up, and you probably do in, in individual instruments. Yeah, then, yes. But the oboe, your instrument, sets the whole Well, thing. yeah, that's right. I mean, I do use a little tuning box yes. so you can so you have a reference point. Some halls do actually have a, under underneath the oboe's chair, there's a little switch, which gives an A. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, on, on the whole, it's just come to be that way. Yeah. I'm on chat room today with Peter Dykes talking about his life as an oboe player, not just in New Zealand, but in Europe as well. The wonderful Thank sound you. of the oboe, Peter Dykes, uh, playing um, a piece there from, uh, from Suffolk, Suffolk. From it's, Suffolk, Benjamin Britten. Uh, it's yeah. kind of a folky piece? Or yes, yeah, it's supposed to be Pan, just um, sort of experimenting with his instrument, with his new reed pipe. Wonderful. Yeah. There you go. And was, I was noticing the breathing, it's a real art, and, and, and the breath and how much you need to take, it's... Um, yes, it's, it's not the bagpipes, but, no. It's, <laughs> no. but it's, it's interesting how you did your breathing yeah. to get to certain... Are you constantly thinking about the sound of the notes as you play? Yes, and you're constantly thinking about the way that you actually give air to the instrument to try to get that kind of round sound. If you stop thinking about it, suddenly the, it, you, can really, you can really tell in the resonance of, of the sound. But yeah, it's a very visceral instrument to play. Um, and yeah, you really have to manage the way that you use the air. Yeah. What's your philosophy, Peter, on teaching youngsters to play woodwinds or in particular the oboe? I think um, I, I, the, my, 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 the two main things when, when, when the young players is firstly um, don't tell them it's difficult <laughs> because you can actually it's, it's really easy to, to start um, developing uh, sort of neuroses about the instrument. It is a very fickle instrument to play but you don't need to worry about that when you're initially getting into the instrument and the second thing is make sure that they enjoy it. Um, because the, the, you, you know, it's, it, there is more. I'll give you one example. Um, I was teaching at a Cathedral Grammar School in Christchurch, and I had a very talented player who came back to me after eight or nine months and just gave me the oboe back and said, I don't want to do this anymore. And I said, Well, oh, it's a shame. You're very talented. Why? Why do you want to stop playing? And he said, Well, I've got to do all these studies and scales, and um, I'd rather play drums because they're much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, there's a lesson for me to learn from that, uh, to make sure that, there's, that they really enjoy it. Yeah. But you played classical guitar too for a while, so yes. well, that, that's a, an adjunct to the, to the yeah, oboe. That's right, yeah. I, um, I, I did that through, through high school as well as playing rock bands and big bands, yeah. and then um, I, I played um, uh, guitar professionally for a couple of years in, in a big band in Glasgow, yeah. I've heard the story about the oboe player and the clay pot theory. That, oh that yes, you've yeah, talked about, yeah, and I yeah. think it's I think it's wonderful. Was it, it happened in Canada or something? That's like right. That? Yeah. Yes. Could yeah. You, could you tell us that uh, that story? It's it's it sort of puts the the pitch yeah. theory to test. Yeah. It? As we were uh, talking about before about the pitch, um, the the stand the, the standard pitch in North America is four hundred and forty kilohertz. Uh, before the days of electric tuners, um, um, an oboe player in the National Arts Centre Orchestra in Ottawa. I can't remember his name, but he used to tune the instrument to a clay pot. When he had the right pitch for an A, the pot would vibrate. That's obviously the pot's resonant frequency. Yes. When he retired, he sort of ceremonially passed the clay pot onto his successor. However, during, during this player's time, as, as principal over this orchestra, he was very, very sort of, um, he was very belligerent about pitch 
and about intonation, which most oboe players are. Um, but he was, he was forever telling people that, you know, we need to make sure that you're not, not playing too sharp because this is, you know. And, uh, and then sure enough, he handed the clay pot to his successor as he retired, and then they actually measured the resonant frequency of the clay pot. It was nowhere near 440. It was sort of 437, 438, something. So, so the upshot is he'd been tuning an entire orchestra flat for his whole career. <laughs> <laughs> a wonderful <Yeah>. story. <laughs> so what's the idea behind the NZSA concerts for schools and families? I think the, the, the root of the idea is, if you look at the pieces that we're playing, it's, it's a little taster of how fantastic symphony orchestras can be. A little bit of Beethoven Fifth Symphony, which yes. of course is da-da-da-da. Um, fanfare for the Common Man, so you can hear a fantastic brass section. Peter and the Wolf. Um, which with, with narration. With narration from Chris Lamsam, which is, yeah. which is fantastic. Yes. Um, so the idea is, um, come and hear, this is what a symphony orchestra is. There's, there's, it's a great experience and you can, it just as to whet the appetite. Yeah. You've already mentioned the conductor for the, for the series, these mm. concerts, yep. Hamish McKeach. Yep. He's no stranger to, uh, well, you've already mentioned new music and this type of orchestral yes. concert. Yeah. Yeah. So he'll be on board. Yep. He's... Um, one of the most um, versatile conductors you will ever come across. Mm. He's incredibly musical, mm. and at the same time, he has a fantastic um, actual conducting technique. Mm -hmm. So, so he's he can turn his hand to anything, be it main repertoire, or you'll see if you dig him up on YouTube with the Pointer Sisters, for example, and yes. System of a Down, and yeah, yes. he's, he's incredible. Yeah. What about yourself, Peter? What's life like away from the oboe and away from orchestras? Um, it's great, great, great fun. What do yeah. you, you get to get into? I enjoy it. Well, Welling, Wellington's, a, yeah, a little bit of sport, a bit of football coaching, yeah. um, I, um, which I sort of got involved with. I'm a, I'm a football nut, which is so typical as an Englishman. Uh, Wellington's a great place for craft beer, so I'm into my real ales and, and that sort of thing. Um, and um, and I got married last December, so oh, it's okay. all it's all yeah. Life in Wellington is pretty rosy. Congratulations! <laughs> I would just like to thank you for giving us a demonstration of your expertise on the oboe, and for joining us on Chatroom. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Peter Dykes on Chatroom today.